Um, yeah, welcome to the next webinar series today uh, with Jonas Schilling and me. My name is Jan Löken. I will, will be the moderator of today and Jonas will be the presenter of the case study. So just for your information, um, last week we had already a little case study uh, presented by Carsten and by Klaus. Uh, then we talked about prognost, anti-system, pressure measurement and all these stuff. Today we are here with Jonas and we'll talk about predictor monitoring system. Predictor means, hey, we're talking about a gearbox monitoring system. So that's, that's not the same like prognost NT um, because the predictor system is really focused on gearbox monitoring system. Welcome, Jonas. I hope you're doing well in these difficult times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thanks, I am. Um, welcome uh, to all, all, you, all of you uh, out there as well. Um, thanks for the introduction, Jan. Um, yeah, as you already said, we'll, we'll be talking about a case study of a gearbox failure today. Um, it's, it's a big um, gearbox from the LDPE production uh, area. And um, yeah, I think we should, we should just start uh, with the presentation and then uh, there's time for questions afterwards. Jonas, ready when you are? From my point of view, we can start. Yep. Okay, perfect. Hi everybody, this presentation shows a case study about an actual thrust bearing failure in a big exterior gearbox and how we kept it alive for several months. So a first glance at the gearbox shows us the configuration of the machine. This is a two drive gearbox. Uh, we have two motors attached to it. It has a big planetary stage and two output shafts for the extruder screws. And the bearing of interest was bearing 8A, which had the failure in this case. So this takes the whole axial load from the screw and from the long output shaft. Looking at the section drawing of the gearbox, we can see the monitoring equipment that we used. Um, in this case, sensor 6 is an axial sensor attached to the gearbox housing very, very close to this axial bearing and dedicated to this bearing. So using this sensor and uh, our high frequency enveloping filtering option from 5 to 10 kilohertz, um, was already showing us the first indications of this failure by end of May in 2020. And we can see here in the confidence scatter plot that we had the confidence above 90% at this point of time, but we were still below the first warning threshold. And also you can see that in the trend that the amplitudes were, or were still pretty low, but the confidence was already there. And then the first indications um, very, very close to the first warning threshold was here on 5th of June. And from then on, the issue started to grow pretty fast. So using the same scale than the plot before, you can see that we have a very, very nice and clear spectrum here with the harmonic set right within the frequency bands of the race fault of this bearing. It's a low speed bearing, so it has only a 223 RPM. And you can see that when the first crack was rising, the amplitude was, re was really, really fast rising. So in here, and um, we saw that all the warning thresholds um, were violated. We are in the red area. So third warning violated, an alarm goes on in the operator room. And um, the customer directly reacted with a load reduction of this gearbox. So he took load from the gearbox, um, which then caused a very, very nice decrease of the amplitudes here. And this is the actual measure that we took together. So we discussed what can we do, how, how can we deal with this issue. Uh, load reduction was the first um, thing that we did. And you can see that this allowed us stabilizing the amplitude and keeping the failure in um, the same condition for a while. So here was the load reduction and the amplitude was decreased right afterwards but the confidence stayed high over the time. So the failure is still there, but we have less load on it. So um, this allowed us for constantly monitoring 
this failure, keeping the trend stable for several weeks, discussing um, this issue once per week in a weekly meeting together with the customer, the vendor and the monitoring company. So this was already end of July here. So this is a whole month that we were allowed to monitor it and keep it stable. So now looking at the direct spectrum of this sensor six, we can also see here on the top um, very nicely the harmonic set of the bearing frequencies. And we can see that the first warning threshold was violated in the direct spectrum beginning of June. So more or less a week after we saw it in the HFE. And from here on, you can also see that we were able to keep it stable by reducing the load. Then we had increased amplitudes again, reducing the load again. So um, we did a kind of a collaborative, uh, collaborative monitoring over the time. And um, in the end, unfortunately, um, this customer had to face a power outage um, in his operation. After this power outage, they started up all their machines again, but this startup actually um, led to a very, very high torque, uh, which then finally led to the destruction of this bearing. So we had a high startup torque after the power outage, and uh, just a few hours after the restart, um, the customer detected smoke and high temperatures in the gearbox, and then finally had to shut down um, his line. So um, looking at the pictures from the overall, um, the customer was so nice to provide us some pictures of this. Uh, we can see that this bearing race was completely broken and they were able to take out complete pieces of this race um, from this bearing and also some other bigger parts that were completely broken out. Um, also, we had some secondary damages on this gearbox. Um, so not only this axial bearing 8A was damaged, but also uh, we in the end had a radial uh, bearing issue and the shaft showed some damage. The thrust bearing itself, as already discussed, the bearing seating, the seals, and also the screw that is attached to this shaft uh, were showing some damages in the end due to this um, very last high torque operation. So as a summary, um, we had a very, very nice col collaboration here together with the customer and the vendor uh, discussing every week what to do and what the actual status is. The rising amplitudes were um, frequently discussed and we could react very nice all together. This allowed us a lifetime prolongation until the spare parts and the staff were in place, um, even during this pandemic uh, situation. So this was uh, in summer 2020. It was very hard to get spare parts and also staff on site. And um, therefore this time that we could save or that we could prolong the lifetime was um, very, very important to have everything in place in the end. Uh, we did actually did weekly meetings from uh, June to August um, that allowed to keep up the operation for more than two months after the first indication.